I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, Six Pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. This is another request for Marv B, a paid request. Thank you so much, Marv B. If anyone wants to request any other type of reviews or topics or reactions or pretty much any type of videos, you just send a paid request either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, this is <sighs> Vivarium. Stars Jesse Eisenberg, Imogen Poots. And what's sad about this film is, you know what, the first 20 minutes or so was interesting. I gotta admit, J.C. Eisenberg and Imogen Poos, considering the roles they were given, were not that bad. Considering what they were given. The look of the film, a little bit of interesting creativity... In the beginning of the movie. Where. Jesse Eisenberg. Imogen Poots. They're a couple. They visit this very strange. Very weird real estate agent. And he takes them. To this. Development. To see this house. And. As I look through the house. The real estate guy disappears. And the guy's vehicle disappears. <clears throat> so like, fuck it, let's go home. But, no matter what they do, they cannot escape this neighborhood. There's no buddy else in this neighborhood. There's no cars. There's no animals. And, <clears throat> anytime, anywhere they go. They go left, they go right. No matter where they go, they go back and end up at the same house. And... Then there's a point they go up on the roof and just the countless stretching out far distances, the same look, model, and color of houses. These are the point that I fuck you, we're gonna walk. They walk and they walk all day, straight line, and they end up in the same place. So literally they're trapped in the middle of nowhere. And that was interesting. Like the way it looked and the way like all these houses looked the exact same. Like when they're driving and there's a beautiful shot where you see like all these houses in this curve. Boom, 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 boom. Like stretched out. Like interesting visuals. And J.C. Eisenberg, Imogen Poos, again they did find the acting and you're like, what's going on? And then one day, a box arrives with a bunch of supplies. And they're wondering, what the hell is this about? And then, a baby appears. Then, next, it's been like 90 days later. And the baby has turned to a child. And that's where the movie fucks up. Big time. 
and I go from there to the end, fuck this movie. <clears throat> because from there to the end, there's like over an hour left in the movie. Nothing much happens. It's repetitive. It's boring. It's bleak. And it's annoying. Because the kid. Will mimic the two actors. The two Lees. When like. Mimicking a fight they had before. Or. He has a voice. But somewhat adult voice altered. I'm a dog. Woof, woof, and the tears running in this weird voice going woof, 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 thinking he's a fucking dog. And at times he will give this ear rapingly shrieking. I'm not going to do it to not fuck up your ears. But just this ear, like, when it's hungry or whatever. And that got on your, got on my fucking nerves really fucking quick to the point I wanted this kid to die. The character. Someone please kill this kid. Why didn't they kill the kid? There's even a point where Jesse Eisenberg puts the kid in the car. And what are you doing? Hey, they want this kid alive. Whatever this thing is, they'll come for it. Or they'll do something. And then for some reason, even though all the times before, Imogen Poots was in the same fainting. For some reason, out of the blue, no, I'm going to go save the kid. I'm going to try to figure you out. And I'm going to start woofing with you. Even later on, she's like, why did I let that kid live? And Jesse Eisberg says, like, well, you're a good person. No, she's a fucking idiot, that's why. Yes, I know it looks like a kid, but if a kid grows from a baby to a kid in 90 days, and you're in a place that you can't leave anywhere, and you're ready to die, you're gonna die, you could very well die, and the weird shit this kid does, yeah, something ain't right in the fucking, something ain't right in the state of Denmark, alright? Something's going on. And then Jesse Eisenberg wants to dig. And he keeps digging. Because he's hoping to reach a bottom. He keeps hearing stuff. And most of the film is just him digging. <laughs> really just digging. Dig. 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 sicker. Dig. sicker. Dig. sicker. Meanwhile the shit that I talked about happens. And then the kid is now an adult. And really not a whole lot has happened. J.C. Eisberg digging. The kid being a shrill. Ah, I want my food. Or woofing. Put the kid in the car. Image and poos. No, I want to be. No, no. Just change your fucking mind. Drop of a hat. Woofing with the kid. J.C. Eisberg digging some more. Then the, the kid's now an adult. And he's the real estate guy from the beginning. Or looks like him. Jesse Eisberg gets sicker and sicker and he dies. Imogen Poots is getting sicker and sicker. Now in her sitting state she wants to try to kill this guy. Now that he's an adult. And there's an interesting visual where the, pavement, the sidewall lifts. And she enters it. And then she goes like these different... Almost dimensions, like a red one and a blue one, as other people going through the same thing she does. Or it's memories. Maybe that's what it's me meant to be memories. I don't know. The whole thing, the whole deal, at the very first scene in the movie, it outlines the bird, the cuckoo. If you don't know what the cuckoo is, the cuckoo is a bird where the mother will drop it into other nests. And the cuckoo will come out of the egg first. And out of instinct will kick the other eggs and other baby birds out of the nest. To their deaths. 
so then it's by itself. And then the mother bird doesn't think anything of it and starts feeding it. And ultimately, the bird gets bigger than the mama bird, and it's, but it's still taking the food. This is the one thing this movie did is taught me what the fuck a cuckoo was. The parasitic bird. That relates to this because what's happening? A baby dropped, like an egg was dropped. These two feed it, feed it, feed it, whatever, feed it. So it goes bigger than them. I don't even know why they get sicker. I, the movie doesn't really explain why they get sicker. I, I guess the food they're eating. I can only assume it's the food they're eating. I, the movie doesn't really make that clear, but I, that's the assumption I make. If it did, it passed by me. I apologize. It passed by me. And then she dies. The the guy throws both bodies to that hole. I don't get why the this alien. I'm just gonna call him alien for the fuck of it. Did the he he starts filling up the hole. But then it magically the the ground magically like the top of it disappears. Just grass over it. <clears throat> Why the fuck did you fill up the hole in the first place if all this fucking magic where you could create fucking here's a sidewalk, I'm gonna lift it. Why did you try to fill up the hole in the first place? Why didn't you just did you know, all this fucking ma magic, whatever the fuck you wanna call it. Voodoo magic? I don't know. And then it ends with he goes back to the real estate we saw at the beginning. The other, the real estate guy from the beginning is there old and dies as the cycle of this thing where takes that body, rolls it up into a bag this big, puts it to a file cabinet. So does that mean there's 18 fucking bodies, I don't know, 80, 85, 80,000 bodies in these file cabinets? Or does someone magically take that body? Just It's, it, it's magic doesn't even make sense. Sometimes... It's like, oh, I'm going to roll this by into a bag and I'm going to put it in this file, filing cabinet. Well, does that mean there's other bodies in the other filing cabinets? Does it just disappear? If that's the case, why put them in the bag in the first place? If you just magically dis you know, disappear, make it magically delicious. I You're not supposed to think about that, I guess. You're thinking too much, Matt. <sighs> Maybe, maybe, maybe if this was a 45 minute episode of a, sh maybe an hour episode of the show, of a show, like 50 minutes, like if maybe if it was that, maybe it could work. But when it's like 20 some minutes of interest and then the next out, does this was like an hour and 38 minutes? The rest of it is just so dull and repetitive and boring and like goes nowhere. And then you get to reveal, you know, what? It's not that satisfying. I think yeah, the, the beginning was promising. But like certain characters, they just have these motivations. Like J.C. Eisberg, I gotta dig, I gotta dig, I gotta dig. I guess J.C. has nothing else to do. There's really an hour of the film is him digging. And then again, the, the Imogen, Poots, Imogen Poots, she's with J.C. Eisenberg, fuck this kid. Now he's like, no, I need to save this kid. They left to end, fuck this kid. I mean, you're more schizophrenic than the fucking villain. Sometimes they do magical shit, sometimes they can't. And it's just like, well, why can it do this, but it can't do that? You're not supposed to think about it. And then people get mad, well, you just don't like bleak movies. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry I have a personal preference. But that doesn't mean just because a movie's bleak, I automatically hate it. John covers the theme. In the Mouth of Madness. Reservoir Dogs. In a way, you just say Jacob's Ladder. 
there's other movies that have done bleak endings, but I enjoy because I think they're better written or better made or better acted or just more entertaining or more satisfying or done better. Technically, John Carver's the fog. What happens at the very end is not very happy. At least to the preacher. There's... I still like the movie a lot. It just depends. Just depends. Then Reservoir Dog is not really a happy ending, but I like the film. It's a good movie. Again, John Carver's the thing. You don't think that's bleak, but it's well done, well made. In the Mouth of Madness, love In the Mouth of Madness. But I thought I liked the way it was done. I can appreciate it. It just depends how it's done, like everything else. But yes, if you're asking for personal preference, I'm sorry I have a personal preference. I'm sorry I like upbeat and movies more than downbeat bleak movies. I'm sorry. But that's not the only reason why I dislike the film. It has an interesting premise, and then it just dawdles and just sits there for the other hour of the movie. And then, oh, ten minutes, last ten minutes, just wrap shit up. That middle section was just dawdling with a thumb up its ass. It's like, it didn't really have anything worthwhile to say. And squandered what was an interesting beginning. That's just my take on it. But with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.